with me and welcome back to my channel or if you are brand new then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on your bell so you will be notified every single time that I upload. I am a paranormal channel, I am a paranormal investigator, the paranormal is the love of my life and I am now uploading three to four videos every single week. So now taking it back to old school Brady 44, I mean you guys know I am all about the haunted dolls. I own two haunted dolls, Emerald and Lisa. My absolute favorite is Annabelle, of course. Now, I feel like I've talked about every single haunted doll or majority of haunted dolls on my channel. I even met one of my favorite dolls, one of my favorite haunted dolls, Amelia the Haunted Doll. Holy crap, you guys, if you've not seen that video, then definitely check it out. Like, I hugged her. She is my third favorite haunted doll. Annabelle is number one, Robert is number two, and Amelia is number three. And I, like, I can't believe I met Amelia. I can't believe I hugged her. I can't believe I talked to her. I made a whole video about it, so definitely check it out like what the heck I can't even believe it but have you guys heard about Charlie the haunted doll now this doll apparently tormented a family and they say this doll is even scarier than Annabelle and speaking of Annabelle I'm gonna grab my Annabelle doll because you guys have not seen her in forever holy crap it has been so freaking long since Annabelle has been on my channel I still want to put her in the background of my videos I mean I like having my red backdrop but I kind of want to add more so I might add Annabelle back here Okay, so getting into Charlie the Haunted Doll. So in 1968, there was this doll that was found in the attic of an old Victorian home in upstate New York. So this doll was found at the bottom of a trunk covered in newspapers. The only other item in this trunk besides the doll was a yellow piece of paper containing the Lord's Prayer. And the newspapers in the trunk had dates on it going back to the 1930s. And it's weird because the actual age of the doll could not be determined. So like imagine finding this old doll in a trunk covered in newspapers from the 1930s, but there's no date or anything to determine the age of this doll found in this old Victorian house in upstate New York. Like, what the heck? So this doll was then added to a collection of antique dolls from this family, and they decided to name this doll Charlie. And this family was a mother and a father, and they had five daughters. But they didn't pay much attention to Charlie. This was just another addition to their collection of antique dolls. And they just, you know, like, it's just a new doll, you know, whatever. But they started noticing that Charlie would be moving from place to place. And nobody came clean about moving him. So it was kind of like, what, you know? There's something going on here. The parents were like, okay, this has to be one of our daughters, maybe just playing with Charlie since Charlie is new to our collection. But no, all five daughters said they had nothing to do with Charlie moving, they never touched him, and it's just, you know, and they seemed very genuine about it. But then things got even weirder because the youngest daughter said to her parents that Charlie actually spoke to her when she got up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. And the parents just said, okay, our daughter has a very wild imagination. I mean, why would Charlie speak to you when you got up to go to the bathroom? So as time went on, the parents were really kind of keeping an eye on Charlie and still noticing that he's been moving around and stuff. And they also noticed that their daughters became very terrified of Charlie. It then came to the point where all five daughters were terrified to get up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night because of Charlie. They were even scared to be like five feet away from Charlie. That's how bad it was getting. But the final straw was when the youngest daughter had scratches all over her and everyone knew this was not from their cat. So you know, the girls were genuinely terrified of what was happening. Their youngest sister is covered in scratches and they all know it's from Charlie. So the parents then took Charlie, put him back in the trunk and locked him up in that trunk and put him back in the attic and everything seemed to go back to normal and Charlie was then forgotten. So years later, as the daughters grew up, they decided to sell the house and they had a garage sale. They took the trunk from the attic and the last thing to go from this house was really the trunk and at this garage sale, there was a woman that wanted to purchase Charlie. So the father saw the doll and was like, okay, um, maybe I should tell this woman about this doll before she purchases it. So he told her, you know, this kind of happened back in the day and you know, this doll seemed to move on his own 
phone and just kind of weird things would happen so before you buy it I just want you to know that but the lady insisted that she still wanted to purchase Charlie so the father was like okay like he is yours here you go and Charlie then belonged to this woman and he never tormented this family ever again and the family like completely forgot about him well I mean they probably didn't forget about him but you know what I'm trying to say and then throughout the years Charlie has been passed down to or not passed down but just given to other people and all these other people have bought him so he's been in quite a few Households. So really wherever Charlie goes the story follows and apparently he still moves from place to place and he's really unlocked by children. It's something about children that gives him all of this power and he kind of comes out and terrorizes people. And today Charlie is actually in a shop in Salem, Massachusetts. So Salem is definitely on my list and I would love to go visit this shop to see Charlie. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think he really is scarier than Annabelle? I still think Annabelle is the scariest. I mean, it's a freaking demon that is attached to the doll. I mean, you guys know the whole story. I've talked about Annabelle so many times on my channel. But with Charlie, it's definitely scary how his powers are unlocked by children. And then for some reason, the kids are scared to use the bathroom at night. I want to know what Charlie said to the young four-year-old girl. Like, he spoke to her. I want to know what exactly he said. But just looking at this picture of Charlie, he is terrifying and I get the heebie-jeebies just by looking at him. But anyways guys, let me know your thoughts on Charlie down below. Would you go to Salem to visit Charlie in the shop? I mean, heck yes, I would. Adding that shop to my list because I need to, I need to see this doll. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Hashtag team 44 hashtag Barbara Thorburns, hey! And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!